Hello, this is Ignatius 500, and I'm Father Benedict Mayaki, who was Saint Ignatius of Loyola that we are still talking about him more than 500 years after his birth. Why does the life of a man from a context so different from ours still challenge us today? Perhaps because something resonates with us when we look at his biography. In his autobiography, Ignatius says of himself very realistically, up to the age of 26, he was a man given to the vanities of the world, and what he enjoyed most was warlike sport, with a great and foolish desire to win fame. Born in 1491 in the family castle of Loyola, Spain, Ignatius was the youngest of 13 siblings of a family of middle-class nobility. It was a Christian family, but not always exemplary. At the family castle, he spent his childhood until he was 11 years old. And although he came from a good family, he was the youngest and that meant making his own living. His mother died when he was still a baby and he was later offered the opportunity of a bright future as a courtier to the great lord of the kingdom of Castile in Arevalo. Imagine for a moment the dreams in the mind of the young Ignatius. On the one hand, the military exploits of his brothers from Naples to Flanders or to America. On the other, the impossible romances of the chivalric books that he devoured. And last but not least, the impeccable courtly forms that he was acquiring with both the sword and the pen. How not to want to be the protagonist of such feats? How not to pursue love and military conquest at all costs? Our desires clearly condition our actions, and in the case of Ignatius, we know that this desire to earn a name for himself led him to go to extremes, things that were never completely clarified and for which some wanted to have him imprisoned. But let's now turn to the present and think about our dreams. Without a doubt, we express ourselves in other terms. We speak of professional success, of being attractive, or of having a comfortable life. But deep down, we are pursuing the same goal as Ignatius, a life in which I am the protagonist of all things and the center of all the applause. In other words, a life that only seeks to impose itself on others. How much energy we waste every day to fatten our ego. No one denies that Ignatius' youthful motivations were far from the gospel message. The temptation, however, would be to want to erase from history everything he did up to the moment of conversion. Ignatius learned painfully that God was counting on his dreamlike nature that was determined to build the kingdom of God. He learned that his desires were a door that opened to infinity when he stopped caring exclusively for himself, and that his experiences in a way that only God knows could help so many others. Like all of us, Ignatius had to shift his vital center from his navel to the service of God in his brothers and sisters. He had to educate his desires. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We leave our protagonist in the service of the Duke of Najera in May 1521 in the city of Pamplona, Spain. <laughs> 